Okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Daniel, Daniel Garcia, and I will be talking today about RPM Lint, Lint and the Summer of Code experience for the past year and for the project in, in general. So, right now I'm the current maintainer of RPM Lint. I'm part of the uh, Python packaging team in, in SUSE but maintaining RPM Lane is one of my responsibilities. So for, for the people that doesn't know what it is, maybe you, you saw this, but if you don't know, RPM Lane is just an old tool. It's, the name is pretty clear. It's a linter for RPM packages. We have this cool logo that we did the past year. And it's a really stable tool. There is no more, no a lot of chain. And it's the, the base code is old or stable, we can say. And there, there are not too much active developers. Basically, it's there are some few fixes or new checks or whatever, but once a month there is an issue or once a month maybe it's too much, less than that. So it's pretty stable. This is the where you can find the, the, the project is is inside the RPM software management uh, GitHub project. And everything is, is handled there, so we have we use the, the issues um, and the merge request, the pull requests and everything. So what it is, the internal thing is is Python code. <laughs> everything is Python. It's pure Python. It's just a linter. Provide the uh, a linter and the uh, RPM diff. This tool is also part of the of the project, and its check is a Python class, not not too complicated. is It's something. It's simple Python code, and not it's not a big, complex project. The most complex part is the RPM thing, that is handled by RPM library. So the RPM lint tool is not something uh, code-wise complex, but the complexity is in what it's doing, the, the RPM packages that we are checking, different checks could be more or less complex, depending on what we are doing. We have also, in the same repository, the main branch is the default, uh, the default branch, is where the main development is happening. But we have a, a branch called OpenSUSE where the security team from SUSE works. And there are a lot of specific code not shared with all the distributions or other people using RPM Lint, but just a specific for the SUSE case. So a specific checks for our distributions are done in, in this, this branch. So this branch is more or less something uh, used by the SUSE security team. So not something interesting for uh, general developers or, or, of, or users of the tool. And another important part of the RPM Lint is the test suite. There is a lot of uh, test cases. There is something good, and it's something good to have in any project, but in a Python project is maybe most important because it's, you don't compile this, you don't have a, a compiler or whatever that will tell you when something is broken, so the test will tell you better. <laughs> if you change something and breaks everything, you will detect during the test. 
And for RPM Lean, it's really, really important because we are testing a lot of different cases for old packages, new packages, for a lot of, a lot of time, for all distributions. So we need to have a specific test for a specific checks because maybe adding or modifying a, a check will break something that is happening on SD11 or whatever. So there are a lot of tests. But the current test suite is, is I could say it's complex, but it's, it's not like it is complex, but it's hard to write new tests and harder to maintain current tests because we have lots of RPM files in the repository, maybe one for each test or something like that, with a specific cases, but we have the binaries and for, for all of them, uh, we don't know where they come. So some developer write a test and has a binary an RPM or create something and add to the repository in 2002, I don't know, and it's there forever. So if you want to modify that check, you need to inspect that binary RPM, detect, and understand everything that it's doing, rebuild, write a, a new spec file, try to rebuild, try to replicate with new rules or whatever. And you're not sure that you are checking the same thing that the original developer wanted to check. Maybe you are writing a new RPM, the checks are working, but you are not checking the same thing. Maybe you are breaking something or forgetting about one specific RPM tag or whatever. So it's, it's hard. So this is the main goal of, of the Summer of Code project. But this is what I have been talking about. To write a new test, you need to, to create or to pick one RPM from Tumbleweed or whatever, put there. But we need to track the spec file for modern, for, for the last binary added. We try to track this in a OBS project. So we have a, an OBS project with a lot of spec files. So some of them you can track and you can modify and recreate, but it's not easy. It's in an, in, in OBS, when we have the project in GitHub, so it's not something simple. And if I modify or if I want to write a new check and I'm a Python developer that can modify the RPM link because it's, it's a simple Python code, you need to know about a spec file, how to build, how to create, and to, to be able to write new tests or to improve the current test. So it's hard. So because it's hard, there are no a lot of more tests. When someone adds something to the project, it's pretty usual to not add new tests. And as I said, update all tests is something really hard, so no one does that. So how to solve this? This is, right now, it's, I'm the maintainer, it's my problem, you could say that. But yeah, I'm, I'm currently more or less the, not the only people contributing, but the most active. And, <coughs> and this is one part of my job. I'm maintaining packages, so this is something that I do when I have a spare time. So. I don't want to do this. So I want, but I, I don't have the time. I, maybe we could say this way better. But yeah, so maybe can someone else do it? That could be nice. So we can think about the Google Summer of Code like the best thing, because maybe someone 
could, could do this for me. That could be great. But as you know, it's not as easy at, as it looks. So yeah, we have the free money from Summer of Code from Google. Google is paying someone to work on your stuff or <laughs> your project. So it's, it's nice. If there is money, there will be people wanting to, to do this. There is another uh, cool side effect that maybe if the project is interesting enough or if the people contributing is crazy enough, you, you will be able to have a long-term contributor and maybe delegate the maintenance in the future. <laughs> but this is really, I, I, I have never seen this happening. I, I don't have a lot of experience with Summer of Code, just like four or five years of working with people, but it's really, it's not something that happens too often. When there is no money, the people tend to not continue collaborating. Not too much, at least. But, yeah, here is the, 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 <laughs> the hard part. Someone should be the mentor. So, and, and that one should be me, also. So there is some work to do. I, I will need to plan, review the code, and yeah, guide the, the, new, the newcomer to <laughs> how to contribute, what I want to, to do with the project. Require some commitment. So I should be there. I should review the, the, the work. I should ask to this intern to do something if it's not doing it. And if we think about it with the experience that I have, maybe, yeah, it could be faster if I just take one week and spend one full week working on this instead of three months mentoring someone. Yeah, it could be. But as I said, I don't want to do this. So I'm trying hard to make it someone else do it even if it's more time for me, but it's someone else doing it. So this is what we did the past year, the Summer of Code of 2023. We have Afrid, Afrid Hussein, a young guy from India. I don't know the city, <laughs> I don't remember. But it, it was a really nice experience because he was really great, and he did a, a, a great job. As I said, yeah, as you know, the Summer of Code is for, not for experienced people, it's for people learning, so you cannot expect to get someone that solve all the problems. They will ask more questions than <laughs> the code that they write, but at least, this person was able to do the work with not too much uh, directions. So it, it, he doesn't give me a lot of work. So I could just say, you need to do this. And he was able to look at the code, understand, write something. I just need to review and say this better or, or worse. But he was able to do this. It's not, some, it's not always like this depends on the intern, but the past year, I think that we were look lucky with this guy because it was really nice. So at the end, we did some improvements in the code. There's a lot of commits. Maybe a lot of them are, we, maybe we didn't need that much, but yeah, this is, how a, a, a new and a students start to collaborate, so maybe there is more uh, failure, <laughs> error, and try to improve. So there is a lot of things that are outdone <laughs> with smaller commits, but there is a lot of work at the end. So we improved the tests, 
we make it easy to write tests instead of requiring just a binary. Uh, now it's possible to write some code specifying the files that should be inside this. So you can write in plain text what the binary. So and you can specify some tags. It's not possible to replicate everything, but right now it's possible to remove a lot of current tests because a lot of basic cases are are possible. Uh, we can replace with the current tooling. And some of the some of the tests, some of the binaries were replaced during this <coughs> during this this project. And we have some small documentation about how to write new tests. So right now it's easier in some cases to write new tests. And these tests, because they are not binary files, because we have in the in, in a Python, it's Python code. So we have in a in a Python file we have the all all the description of the file of the RPM that you want to replicate to, to do the test. It's a lot easier to understand and to maintain in time. So I think that no one can see anything, but I will explain. This is that one is what we had before, and this is what we, uh, we can do now. Looks pretty similar, but it's because it's, it's, that is the test. But yeah, uh, previously, previously we had just a, a path to a binary RPM, and just the test, the test just ran RPM, RPM linked against that, and then run uh, do the checking. And in the new in the new code, we don't have a path to a binary. We have a lot of lines defining what is inside this binary. So we have here in this example we have a, a Python uh, list with one line per file that that it's inside of this fake package. So if you Look at this test now. Uh, you can understand what you are testing. What you are, you are testing because you you, are, you can see that there is a file in your lib uh, Python whatever. But if you check the previous one, you don't know what is inside the Python check Python doc in package RPM. So it's easier. So this is the real code, the direct uh, outcome that we have right now about the past year summer of code. So at the end, it works. It requires some time from me. I spent three months during the summer uh, meeting each week with the intern, following the, the, the work, reviewing, asking for change, but at the end, we have a better uh, project. We have a better test suite. And for new checks, I have written uh, more tests because now it's easier. So I'm happy with the, with the outcome. And yeah, what, what do we learn during this process? Because um, doing this, we discover a lot of things about the, the, <laughs> the old code base and the old RPMs that are there. We have a lot of very specific RPM files, as I said, because RPM Lint is a project with that is old, that there is old code there. It, it was there, I don't know when, when it is the first commit, but 20 years, I don't know. So there are very old RPMs, and it's not something easy to replicate. It's easy to replicate simple tests where you are checking something in a spec file or where you are checking something that a file is in a specific, in a specific, a specific place, or if a 
file is a binary or whatever, because it's easy to place just a file here and do the check. But when there are uh, complex things like uh, specific tags, you need to specify everything. Um, it's important also to be careful when replacing current tests because, as I said, we don't know what are doing or, or where they come, all, all the RPM files. So we need to expect, in, inspect uh, everything that is inside that test file. And we need to check to read the code to verify that the, the, the new test is checking exactly the same, or at least uh, the same idea, because in other case, it's really possible that we are removing some real test and we are testing nothing or whatever because we replace a file, but we remove something that were tested before. So it's something that we need to be very careful. Um, yeah, the new, the new way of writing tests is useful. It simplifies a lot to write new tests or even if someone reports that RPM lint is, uh, is warning, is giving um, um, bad error or whatever, I can write a test to verify really quickly, to verify something that someone reports. I don't need to download an RPM, add to the test or whatever. It's, it's a lot easier. And the other thing is, I also mentioned this, it's, it's hard to keep the interest contributor. We have more contributions from Afrit after the summer of code, but yeah, too, too few, so like uh, two or three more commits. So it's not like he's actively working on, on this, but at least he knows the project and when he needs or when he has Time to do that, it's possible. So because the past year was a good experience, I propose a new project for this year to continue doing this. So we have an intern this year. We have two uh, applicants, so that's nice, and two real, two good real proposals, so it's, it, it was good, I have to choose. So we will have a new intern this year, so I hope that we will finish or complete the full tr transition to remove every or almost every binary from the GitHub repository. <coughs> and the project is similar to the past year. It's similar, there are maybe less work to do on the, uh, on the code itself, but more work to do replacing all the RPM files. So now that we have the platform to do it, the work is to go uh, file by file, check where this file is used, and replace. Remove the file, write a new test, and verify that it's again exactly the same. So that's the goal. And if we have more time, depends on the, on the intern way of working, and if we are too fast, we will try to improve the number of tests. So that's the idea. Um, beside this summer of code, this project, how about they improve the, the testing? That is the first step. Uh, there are other things to improve, or that, not to improve, it's something that we can do in the project because there is a lot of room for improvement always. Mm, one thing that I want to do is to try to modernize the code, to look at, it's not like, RPM Lens is a big project. It doesn't have a lot of lines of codes. So it could be something doable to 
review the code, try to write with uh, more modern Python code, <coughs> review the, cl the class, um, the inheritance and everything. So it could be something possible to do a small refactoring to, to, to improve the, or to modernize a bit the code base and remove what is really old. We have, in RPM Lean, we have some kind of spec parser. It's not a parser, it's just a lot of regular expression to check the spec file. And I know that there are formal uh, spec file parsers, but yeah, I have not, um, I want to try to integrate some kind of formal parser in the, uh, in the spec check. So we can remove a lot of regular expression that we have there that is parsing <coughs> line by line the, the spec file. We can improve the performance. It's possible to try to run the different checks in parallel and, and do a lot of things at the same time so it not takes a lot of time when, the, when we have big RPM files. So yeah, the, the performance improvement is something that is there in the GitHub issues for a long time. So when someone uh, start to work uh, on, on that, it will be a good improvement. And yeah, this, the idea of this talk was also to ask the people that are using everyday RPM Lint uh, if there is something good to have or something to change or if there is something annoying in the project that maybe it's easy or good to plan for the future so we can get a bit more of activity to this project. Not too much because I don't want to have to work uh, 20 hours per day on this, but of course it's possible to, to improve the, the project and to have a, a, a bit more active uh, project with more participation. So yeah, this is this is all that I have. If anyone has some questions or complaints about the project or want to say something, now is the time to do this. Thank you for the presentation. It was really nice. Um, have you thought about uh, making the RPM Lint improvement uh, Hegwig project? Or is it better in a summary of code format? No, it, 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 could be, it could be good. It could be something that we can do in the Hegwig uh, project. It's, of course, it's something that we can do for the next half week. Because, yeah, I, I, I didn't think about that, but it's, it's something that could be interesting. So maybe, yeah, I can try to do it myself and bring more people from SUSE to work on that, at least for a week. We can do a lot of things there. Yeah, it's a good idea, thank you. Another thing that, um, there is also another tool that I don't know if you know about, that is a spec cleaner. It has some similarities with RPM Lean. It also parses the spec file and run a lot of regular expressions. So there is a lot of code that we can mix or use in both cases because there is a lot of things done in both places. So yeah, there is also room for improvement there. I'm I also have planned to work on a spec cleaner, but yeah, I have not spent a lot of time there. I will need to review and to spend some time. So maybe it's another good candidate for 
another year Summer of Code uh, project. Hello, I have a question. Uh, when you prepare the assignment for the participants, so do you always know what will be the complexity or have you experienced, for example, that something was unknown and then it exploded and it was a lot more work than you expected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is part of the Summer of Code. Um, I, for, the, for the project, I just prepared some, something that I want to do, something that is not too specific, but is a task. And I don't expect that the complete project is done during the Summer of Code. The past year, we, we did half of the, of the project because we don't have time. <coughs> so I, I propose the same thing this year to, to try to complete what it is. So yeah, what I, what I do is to do this, to present a project that should be longer. But in any case, if the intern is really good, it could finish the thing earlier. But it doesn't matter in, in the summer code because it's something between the mentor and the intern. So if the project is too large, you will know and you can just change your, your goal and decide, OK, let's do this. and, and and not try to achieve everything because it's more complex than expected. So I, I didn't plan everything because I don't know all the implications. So I let the intern to face the problem. And if it's too difficult, it's OK. So it's part of the learning, it's part of the project to find if what is possible and what is not. Yeah, maybe I think you should mention that you did some of codes before, and we yeah. have SUSE employees that were actually part of the Google Summer of Code project. So for all of you looking for talent and hiring, it's also an opportunity to meet some really good people. And um, if you have time, hand in projects, I think it's also quite a fun experience. And by the way, Daniel is in my team. I hope I can get you more time for this one. I promise. Yeah, thank you. This is something that I, I have not talked about a lot, about the, the outcome, the, not just the code outcome of be a mentor for the Summer of Code, or not just Summer of Code, but any other open source project where you have new people coming and you need to spend a lot of time and energy uh, teaching or helping. It's something that, yeah, for some people maybe it, it doesn't work, but yeah, it's something that I, uh, at least, uh, it's something that I find uh, funny. Uh, I, I, I mean, maybe it's not the word. <laughs> I, I have a lot of fun um, mentoring people because I, for me, it's, it's hard. It's harder to try to find the time or the energy to to write the code or to face one problem that is something, again, I will need to do this again. It's a repetitive task. For me, it's easier to just find someone, delegate, even if that person uh, doesn't have the experience and at the end, I will need to do it, more or less, everything. But for me, it's easier to just try to teach that person to do that instead of doing, doing it. But yeah, depends on the pencil. And I had some experience doing this um, for uh, Genome applications. I have done like three, I don't know how many years, two, two years of Summer of Code for Genome as a, as a mentor and, and the, the Ritchie project that is similar also for, for Genome applications. And, and yeah, the, the experience is not always good. I, have, I had some bad experience with an intern and disappear at, at, at the middle of, of, the, of the project. So it, that is really bad experience because you spend a lot of energy trying to teach and, and 
And there are other applicants that didn't get to the to the money. And someone, if you have someone that disappeared after the first payment, it's really sad. So it's it's a really bad experience. But I, as I said, I have mentoring like five projects, and this happens once. The, the other people were really nice. You have people with more skills or people that have less experience, but they are doing the work. They are working hard to try to do this. And then maybe they are not continuing contributing to the project that they work. But as Sasha said, um, I found that one girl that was an intern with me for Genome was working for SUSE, was joining to SUSE. So when I saw, when I saw her name in the, in the email, it was really nice for me because I, I were part of her training. So it's really nice to know that some young uh, developer uh, has a career and you were part of the training or whatever. It shouldn't be in, in the main project that you propose, but maybe it starts with OpenSUSE and ends writing code for, I don't know, Debian or whatever, but it's, it's, it's nice because it's part of the community. We all start at some point, and if you remember someone that was there, it's nice to be the one that is there for the new people. So for me, it's really nice to, to be there and to see the people grow. So it's a nice experience. I recommend to the people. It's a bit of work, but it's, it's not too much. You just need to stay there, answer the mails. And if you find not annoying person, it's not too hard. So anything else? Okay, thank you.